this is a very mature GUI, now uh, I showed this to some people here yesterday, but I'll, I'll show it again. This, again, this embeds NeoVim using that, that message pack channel. And uh, this, is, this is a reflection, this is the screen state that it's getting over the RPC API. This is not running in a terminal, this is not a terminal. This is a canvas element in an electron process that is uh, drawn using the electron API. Uh, and it's just drawing screen state that it requested from, from the inman process. And then uh, in the same electron uh, process, it it's, has these other widgets that can, that can work with the editor. So here it's showing you, like, it, you can have hover elements. These are HTML <coughs> hover elements shown over the, the InVim screen. And there's a browser. Sure, why not? <coughs> Vimar is another one that I, I'm very excited about. It's, uh, it was a popular uh, Mac Vim alternative. And he's now implementing, he's now re-implementing it on NeoVim. If you go to their releases here and you have a recent version of macOS, then you can try it out. And NeoVim QT is probably what we're going to ship on Windows, and we're just probably going to ship it as our official GUI uh, once we can polish it and package it. <coughs> Solid Oak is a Rust IDE that was implemented with NeoVim. This is written in Rust. It's communicating over a message pack RPC channel using the Rust message pack library. Uh, and the reason that these keep popping up is because message pack RPC is a structured, standardized RPC protocol. Uh, the problem that with the, the Vim Eight JSON. Uh, it's not. There's no API in Vim eight, at least not yet. But also, you you can communicate using sending JSON messages to and from Vim eight. But there's no good protocol. I mean, there is JSON RPC, but it's underspecified. There aren't mature libraries for it on every platform, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how many GUIs pop up for it. But uh, I, th I think that the uh, proliferation of GUIs here suggests that message pack was a good choice for an RPC protocol. And uh, as an aside, you know, you can send JSON messages over a raw channel to Invim if you really wanted to. But to, to, to use the API like with the least amount of friction and hassle, you would, you would send a, a message back. Message. <clears throat> and again, Bram wants, wants embedding too, and he wants better GUIs. So that's just a, a mentioned for people who uh, wonder if this is really needed. <clears throat> terminal, so some people wonder, like, what, what's the point of Terminal? I've become convinced that <clears throat> terminals in the year 2016 are a, they should be a, a, a standard component. Now, they're like a primitive now. And even in like POSIX, you know, you have PTY, which itself is sort of a primitive. It's a primitive that the operating system gives you. So. People think that uh, people think that terminals are like some huge complicated component, and if your if your application includes a terminal emulator, then it's bloated. But that misconception comes from the fact that they people have fought. I, I this is my speculation. People fight with terminals; they're hard to configure, so they probably think that they're just really complicated. Well. The, and the user interface is complicated, like configuration of the terminal is complicated, and there's no standard which makes 
uh, which complicates the ecosystem. But you know, a terminal itself only requires about <coughs> six thousand lines of code. Um, if you if you download Suckless's ST terminal, it's four thousand lines of code. Okay, and the V term, which is the the terminal that NeoGum ships with, is is again it's under five thousand lines of code. And uh, there are entire functions in, in, in Vim that are a comparable length of code. So I, it, it's hard to say that that they're, uh, that a terminal is too much bloat, I think. Um, and the benefits of a, of a terminal are that it, it means that you can now, you can wrap applications that were never even intended to uh, to be componentized because since they since the only thing they do is respond to input and output, you you can integrate with them just by sending key presses. So key bindings are like a really primitive but also a really elegant sort of uh, layer of uh, uh, integration layer. Uh, And since uh, every application that runs in a terminal can do nothing except for respond to input, it, it's it's like an accidental. It, there's this accidental extensibility that falls out of it, um, and th that could see applications that maybe aren't obvious now, but you, you can start to see some really interesting applications. Like, like, for example, I was able to wrap the Lynx terminal web browser uh, with a few commands. And uh, I can control it in normal mode in InVim uh, just by having a few key bindings. Uh, I'm going to try and wrap it up. There's a uh, just to go over features. Anyone who hasn't uh, isn't familiar with, with uh, let me also briefly mention that uh, if you download InVim. You can get an overview of all our features by just doing you no know, help and then features. But I'll mention a few of the notable ones here. Shada is a replacement for Vim info. It's extensible. It's it the, the it's it's in message pack, which means that uh, it's structured. You don't have to figure out how to parse it. Someone wrote a plugin uh, to uh, parse Vim info, and they they asked on Twitter how. How can they do this for NeoVim? And I said, you don't have to. You don't have to parse it because you just read it in as message pack. We have built-in message pack support. You can parse a message pack dump like that using the built-in message pack thing. And that gives you a VML dictionary that you can just walk through. So it's structured. and. Uh, it's extensible, so we can keep adding more and more state in the Shada format. Uh, I, this is my favorite feature because it's something I fixed and it really bug, bugged me, but it's also kind of small. But meta keys work correctly in, uh, everywhere in every terminal in NeoVim. And there's a fun quote here from Bill Joy. And he might be happy to know that an entire namespace of key maps opened up because now you can use the main key. Built in bracket paste. XTG support. If you care about that, then you'll like it a lot. If you don't care about it, there's, then it, it doesn't affect you at all because NeoVim, we, we can't use the same path as Vim for our config file, so it had to be something different, anyways. So that means there's no reason not to just follow the XTG uh, directory layout format. That makes a lot of people happy. We also now ship with a, a check health command. This is like a brew doctor. It, it uh, checks the state of your system, gives you feedback, and we're going to keep improving that, improving that so that um, common problems that users run into can be fixed. Uh, but
by the system inspecting the environment and inspecting uh, the configuration. There's a really cool new event called text yank post. Uh, anytime you do a yank and it, through a delete, um, if you do it here, if you do it here in the, in a, as an X command. or if you do it using normal mode commands. Any delete, yank, anytime uh, a register is overwritten, it will fire this event. And what that means now is that it's trivial to implement the yank ring from Emacs, if you're into that. And we also introduced this, this uh, uh, standard v variable, v event, so that there's now this, it, it, it's a common, it's a dictionary that will hold all of the relevant data for any event. This is sort of like in JavaScript where you have that, that event, magic event object that appears whenever you listen to an event, you can get the information about that event. This, this, this is something that seems like kind of obvious now. But uh, up until now, you know, whenever you have an auto command, you would have to check things like register or the count or something like that. Okay, I'm wrapping it up. Uh, so I want to address also like some misconceptions. Well, there's like a funny misconception, which is when people install NVIM, they think it's like a lot faster, or at least they feel like it is, but. I don't see why that would be, because we didn't really do any performance improvements. Um, Vim 8 has some NVIM features, it doesn't have all. And uh, I already addressed the, the IDE thing. Uh, as a thought experiment, and as like a driving goal of NVIM, I think it's interesting to think, like, what can we do to remove all the technical reasons for them not being able to adopt the NeoVim source tree. A lot of people ask the question, like, is NeoVim still relevant anymore now that Vim 8 has job control? I don't know. I mean, I think it is. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, a lot of people appreciate the refactorings that we've done. Uh, but the interesting question to me is, uh, why wouldn't uh, Vim adopt the NeoVim source tree instead of like saying like, does NeoVim still need to exist? Well, does Vim still need to exist? And if there are technical reasons for NeoVim or for Vim to still exist, what are those? And would it would it make more sense to address those in the NeoVim source tree instead of addressing instead of like you know just throwing away NeoVim? Because we it's probably. I haven't emphasized this enough. A eye-watering amount of refactoring has been done in Neovim. It's staggering. Like man years of, of effort have been putting it put into it. And this is stuff that eventually probably will happen in Vim in the next 20 years. Why not? It's already been done, so why wouldn't you take that? If if we can make it rock solid, rock, you know, stable, bug free, why wouldn't you take that? And, and, and the the built-in GUIs, to me, are not something worth preserving. And, and I would say that's the major thing that, that is still in the Vim source tree that obviously can't be restored in the, the NeoVim source tree. NeoVim QT, the NeoVim QT GUI works better than GVim. Um, as far as like performance goes, and it has less flicker. Um, there, there's like still a bug with uh, Flipboard, but you know, once that's fixed, uh, there's not really any reason for GVim to exist anymore. You know, MQT doesn't even depend on GTK. You can you you, you don't need GTK to run you know, MQT on Linux, um, which a lot of people consider a feature. Um, a lot of people don't want to install GTK. But if they're running KDE or if they're running I3WM, something like that. <coughs> and, uh, 
Yeah. I think that's that's all I have. <coughs> You must write a book about it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Questions? There, quite, yeah, definitely. There, there's quite a few things. So, the, I'm not into Jason and the, the message uh, thing either. So, I mean, I would love to have an intro and examples and things and how you use them and um, maybe some of the visual things that you can see that makes them different from new them. Uh, I thought you were going into that, but there's a lot of things, um, not just theoretical, more like philosophy about the whole thing, which is interesting, and you need to expand on that, and I uh, would love to see you writing all this up, not just, you know, as you know, um, yeah. influence. Uh, you need to put this in the text for people to see because people, uh, well, when they hear about, oh, there's a neo BIM, so what, what, what's why the whole thing? Uh, so there, there needs to be yeah, right, yeah. the YouTube page. The and thing. I don't use this link to everyone who's interested in you know, because yeah, you need to write it's, it's, it's hard to explain. I, I have a, a work in progress that's. I haven't been meaning to finish for like months, but yeah, I, I do need to get that out the door. So, yeah, we'll do that. And uh, the reason that I didn't show examples is because I don't have a good reason, but um, you know, there's lots of videos out there of people doing things. I can show some of those maybe, but. Yeah, we want to get to lunch too. Oh, well, I'd rather be back on, on time, I'd rather have lunch now and be back on time sure, and start sure. uh, mm -hmm. whatever you want to show. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that people who are showing up for a brand's talk, uh, yeah, won't be standing in, fr in front of this when it's closed. I mean, just, okay, we're not far away, but still. Uh, I'd rather be back on time and then see some of the things and yeah. then I expect Bram to come in and other people too. And we may as well have to remove our stuff and remove even the tables to, to make room for people. So if really like 40 people, or 42, are showing up, then uh, we need some more space in here. And uh, I was expecting we had more, much more um, uh, chairs. For we don't, so I expect people to be yeah, standing sure. here a lot. Uh, anyways, as, as you are here already and you have probably registered, you are entitled to a chair. <laughs> or rather, it's like first come, first